Today we will be talking about communicating and collaborating with Zoho remotely and the applications that you can use to help you do that uh, while working remotely with a scattered workforce. Um, so the agenda for today, first I'm going to talk a bit about Zoho as a whole, then I will go into Zoho remotely, then I will talk about Click, Meeting and WorkDrive and at the end <clears throat> I will show you some resources that we have um, to assist you during this time, you know, if you are struggling financially, we have a few programs in place, as well as obviously Zoho Remotely is free um, until the 1st of July. And at that time, we will reconsider the situation <clears throat> in, you know, on a global scale and decide whether we want to extend the free period or turn it into a, a paid sort of platform. Um, but it will be very similar to our other pricing <clears throat> um, you know, the, the way we price out other, other platforms, which will be a very affordable for you. Um, so I want to do a poll quickly. So I just want to know how familiar you all are <clears throat> with Zoho. So are you very familiar? Maybe you're using Zoho One or you've used quite a few Zoho products before. Are you just a little bit familiar? You've never used them? Or is this your completely like your first experience with Zoho? Okay, so um, <clears throat> someone said they've used Zoho products before. Great. Someone said this is their first experience with Zoho. So that's awesome. Welcome, both of you. Um, yeah, that's really cool. So you'll both learn a lot about or you'll all learn a lot about, you know, Zoho remotely and definitely Zoho in this webinar. So <clears throat> first, um, this is just a little slide to show you to explain a bit about Zoho. So we've been around for 24 years um, and you know that generally shocks quite a few people because we tend to not spend much money on marketing. Um, we spend a lot of money on engineering, on product development and on re research and design. Um, someone said, what's the difference between Zoho One and Zoho Remotely? So I will um, I will get into that in a second and I'll explain the difference. <clears throat> So also Zoho has actually over about nine and a half thousand employees now, and we all are working together across multiple countries and obviously a lot of different time zones and a lot of uh, different departments. So how does Zoho, a huge company of this size, maintain our communication and collaboration between their employees? Um, we do it by using Zoho. So all of Zoho employees use Zoho products to do everything. Um, <clears throat> from from marketing to communication to productivity applications to tracking our our expenses, everything we do using Zoho One. Um, and I'll talk about the difference in a second. So just to um, go over this, I just want to be clear that our promise to you is we don't own your data, you do, and we will never sell your data, and we will never do advertisements within. Um, the products. So I understand that you might be, you know, a little concerned because of the free suite of remotely, because generally with free products, it means maybe a lot of ads and a lot of hidden tracking software with the potential to sort of use your data um, in ways that you maybe don't know about. But with Zoho, we really value your privacy because we also value our privacy as a company. We are a private bootstrapped company, meaning that we don't have shareholders that we need to keep happy. And our CEO has made it very clear that we will never make an IPO. So we will never go public, um, which just means the only people we need to take care of is our customers and our staff. And so remotely is free right now because in these crazy times when there's a lot of hardship, uh, we want to give back to our customers who've supported us for all of these years. And if you are interested in hearing more or reading more about our privacy and security policies, you can head to um, Google your browser and just type in Zoho privacy security policy and you can um, find out more about that there. So this is how we like to <clears throat> lay out our product offering. At the bottom, you can see all of our um, applications and these are available as standalone applications. So you can purchase one or you can purchase a few. Um, and they all have different pricing <clears throat> um, 
sort of details. So you can go into the apps individually and have a look at those. But if you're going to get two or three of these applications, you are probably better off in terms of uh, money and value uh, investing in a platform. So one of these here, quite often you will save money uh, sort of bundling the applications together. But definitely just have a look into that if that's something you're interested in. So these are the platforms here. And we have, you can see customer experience platform, the finance platform, HR, collaboration and commerce. We also have a workplace platform as well. It's not pictured here. <clears throat> um, and then up the very top, you can see we have Zoho One. So um, the difference between Zoho Remotely and Zoho One is that Zoho Remotely will fit in here as one of these platforms because it only has 10 applications. It's just quite a small bundle of apps um, to run a specific part of your business. So while remotely covers sort of communication, collaboration, productivity, and remote assistance, um, it doesn't cover things like finance or, or some, you know, marketing. So that's why it's just one platform. So that is Zoho remotely, and that is free right now. And then Zoho one is our big bundle of over 45 different applications. And, um, if you're interested in, learning more about Zoho One, we do have some webinars recorded. Um, so basically, yeah, basically Zoho One includes everything, marketing, sales, support, finance, productivity, collaboration, HR, um, <clears throat> you know, and it's all sort of in the one, in the one really, really affordable uh, package that can add a lot of value. So you can have a look into that. Um, and but for now, we'll focus on Zoho Remotely today. So these are the 10 applications included in Zoho Remotely. Um, and they can be broken up into four different categories. So like I mentioned before, um, communication, collaboration, productivity, and remote assistance. And this is how we like to break down the apps into those different categories. Um, so within communication, we have click meeting and showtime. Collaboration, we have work drive projects and sprints. Productivity, we have writer sheet and show. And remote assistance, we have assist. So today I will be covering uh, only click meeting and work drive. And I will show you actually a bit of writer and sheet. But basically, <clears throat> click is our team chat tool. Meeting is our online meeting and webinar platform. Uh, Showtime is our sort of classroom style training or webinar solution as well. So I'm actually using Showtime right now to run this webinar. WorkDrive is sort of our unified filing system. Um, projects and Sprints are two project management applications. Projects is for waterfall project management and Sprints is for agile project management. If you don't know what that means, um, that's fine. You can watch our project webinar. If you're interested, let me know. Then we have these productivity applications, which is our office suite. So it's our uh, sort of text document creator, our spreadsheet creator, and our presentation creator, which I have used today uh, show to build this presentation for you. And then we have assist, which is our <clears throat> remote assistance tool. So it allows, um, like, for example, IT people to log into a customer's computer with their permission, of course, and um, you know, take over the mouse and fix a certain issue going on within their computer. So um, if you're interested in more information about those, let me know. But for today, I will be talking about Click, Meeting and Work Drive. <clears throat> so um, firstly, starting with Click. Click is our flexible team communication. And you can chat in messages, audio or video calls. You can share files, you can create channels, for example, like a marketing channel or a finance channel. You can do video broadcasting, you can share your screen with your uh, team, you can uh, plan events and you can set reminders as well. And in general, our team chat tools are typically a bit fragmented and disconnected from the apps that we usually like to um that we usually use to, to actually do our work. So with Click, it helps you move from fragmented to focus because it connects with all of these applications that you are using. Um, 
it's available on desktop and mobile. So you can see this desktop app here, which I use and I know everyone else in Zoho uses heavily um, and a mobile version as well, which I also use a lot when I'm, I know I'm not traveling so much anymore, but say if I go to, you know, the shops or whatever, and I'm doing some, some uh, food shopping, uh, I can have that app application with me on my phone so I can just keep up to date with what, with what's going on. Um, yeah, and then on this slide, you can actually see this is one of those channels. So it's got a little hash symbol. Um, someone has shared an image and then they have shared a document. Uh, and over here we have a, you know, sort of reminder and then some status, uh, a status of, of the to-do list as well. <clears throat> So also within a channel or even a private chat, you can perform multiple functions that connects click with other applications and third party applications. So this is a channel here. Uh, you can see they've shared a document and you have these little three buttons. You can do these actions here, set reminders, which I really find useful. Uh, and you can also click more. And then from there you can add this chat specifically as an issue within projects or create a task or you can see Google Drive and this Groove HQ and Box are third-party applications so you can connect those in with Click as well. Um, also Click is embedded across the entire platform so it's available in all of the Zoho Remotely apps and mostly every Zoho One app. Um, but basically what it means is there's a little smart bar, we like to call it, down the bottom of the application. This is in Zoho Mail. Um, it's not included in Remotely, but it is in Zoho One. So you can see this smart bar and you would, if you were to click on this little chat icon, um, click would actually open up. <clears throat> and even though it's a sort of mini version, it has all of the same functionality as the desktop version of Click as well. So now I will go into a click demo. So I'll show you a demo. So I'll just switch to <clears throat> my browser here. Um, when you first type in remotely.zoho.com or you first sort of log into your account, this is what you're going to see. So this is the um, sort of <clears throat> main screen when you log in. You can see all of these applications here. You can see that there's Lens. Um, this is not available in Australia yet, so we won't worry about that. But basically, you can click into these applications or you can simply type in like click.zoho.com in, straight into your browser, um, which is what I did here. So it's a bit slow today. <clears throat> so yeah, this is what happens when you log in to click. Um, one of just a cool thing I like is that you are given a little quote of the day, which is just nice to see. Um, you have all of these conversations over here, all of your channels, um, some contacts, and also a little bot, which can help you with those reminders and stuff like that. So if we look at <clears throat> the conversation with Bob, um, you can see that he is talking to us about working from home and eating too much bread. Um, which is really cool. I've actually been making some sourdough, which is super fun. But anyway, he's talking to us about bread and then he sent us this file that we can download. He's assuring us it's not a virus. Um, so that's good to know. It is in fact a very old uh, GIF of one of our Zoho building blocks of our logo. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, basically you can just really easily send messages from here. You can also see that Bob is actually offline. So you can set your, um, your status so you can be available, you can be busy, or you can appear invisible if you wanted to. Um, so yeah, if you were to type in a message and send it to Bob, he would receive it when he came back online. You can see these actions that you can perform here. Um, you can come up here and do an audio call or a video call or a screen share. You can also mute the chat for maybe eight hours if 
um, Bob is sending you too many messages or something like that. Um, and then another cool thing you can see here, type slash for quick commands. So you can actually do these slash commands. Um, and there's a few things here. You can send some feedback, you can send a mail, and you can also create reminders just by putting this slash here. You can also create reminders by clicking up here um, and, and add in some reminders here or assign the reminders to other people who are in your team. Um, within Click, you can also create an external channel, meaning that people from outside of your company can join in on the conversation. Um, so you can see these external channels here. You would just click create external channel and then you would type in the name of the external channel. You would invite the participants with their email and then you would create a small little description and you have some advanced um actions here so you can select you know if you add an external person as just a member they won't be able to edit channel information they won't be able to remove other people so you can set all of this access here as well um you can see one of these external channels um <clears throat> so this is with people outside of the organization you can do similar functions you can add participants do a broadcast, you can mute the chat, um, we can unmute it. I have a few questions here. Do they have to be Zoho users for the external channel? No. So they don't need to be external, uh, they don't need to be Zoho users, sorry, you would just send them a uh, an invite to their email, they would accept that invite. And then, yeah, I don't believe they would need to like create a Zoho account. They definitely don't need to be a paying customer, um, but I will actually figure out what it looks like from their side and I can I can let you both know those. Um, yeah, I can, I can send you both an email uh, with, you know, what it looks like for the external user. <clears throat> um, what else? So... So yeah, that's pretty much, there's a few other things you can do. You can connect it, um, you can extend it with other applications. You can create sort of different channels with, you know, so you can see we have a daily briefing channel here. Um, there's lots of information in there. There's some an announcement channel. So you can just create different channels. We have lots of channels at Zoho for um, like, certain you know if I'm running this remotely webinar we have a channel for this remotely webinar so that all the people involved in in running this are updated and it's just a really great tool for sort of team collaboration and communication so back to my slides um, now I'm going to talk about Zoho meeting which is our team meeting and webinar application so we also have Zoho Showtime, which I mentioned before. Um, I won't be covering that today. That's more for sort of classroom style webinar training when you have like a series or something uh, like lesson one, lesson two, lesson three. The main difference is that the user in interface is a little bit different and you can also take payment for running your webinars using Showtime. So if you were like, um, if you have some sort of content, like maybe a, a gym or some you're explaining maybe business software and you wanted to charge for that, you could do that using Showtime. Uh, I prefer to use Showtime for webinars, so that's what I'm doing today. In a few weeks' time, we will be starting an advanced series of uh, these webinars, which I'll talk about a little bit later on, and we're actually using meeting on those. Um, so it's just whatever you sort of want to go with. So basically with meeting, um, you can run webinars, they can be, uh, you can run live webinars, you can plan and pr promote them, you can use audio and video and screen sharing, and then you can engage your audience with a Q&A and a poll um, similar to this right now. Then you can run sort of internal meetings or external meetings as well. Anyone with the link can join, but you can also set up some moderator controls. So even if someone with the link were to be able to join, you could set it so you could lock the meeting and you would have to give everyone access 
um, you know, one by one so that if you were talking about some sensitive information, you could make sure that you're only allowing in people who you want in the meeting, even if they were to somehow have the link. Uh, then you don't actually need to download anything to use Zoho Meeting. You can, but you don't have to. You can record your sessions, you can build some reports, and um, it's very secure. So, um, sorry, let me just... Yeah, so, so with the security, all of the information is encrypted from end to end, um, which basically means that as the customer information moves from sort of <clears throat> from their side and moves through the system to your side, um, it's encrypted the whole way. So there's been some issues with like Zoom recently about them sort of accessing your data or people logging in and watching meetings when they shouldn't be there. So Zoho Meeting has that increased security and always has had that increased security so that this can never happen. So no unnecessary privileges are given to the, the attendees. Um, and yeah, when you start a meeting, you can, you can sort of lock people out or accept them one by one. And also each time you start a meeting, when you set up uh, the, the meeting, you have to allow access to your audio and video. So before you can even start the, the meeting, you have to turn your video and audio on, uh, just a bit of privacy when you're setting up the meeting or the webinar on your end. So I'll do a quick demo of meeting. So um, just to note is that I don't want to like start a meeting because it might interact with what we are doing right now on Showtime. And it seems my internet is a bit slow from everyone working at home. Um, but basically, this is what your end of Zoho meeting will look like. So it's very straightforward. If you want to start a meeting, you would click meet now. If you want to schedule a webinar, you would click that. You could schedule a meeting. Um, so you could type in the meeting topics. So, um, you know, business, you could type an agenda, you could add participants, they can be external or internal. I'm pretty sure you can have up to 250 people join your meeting. Katie said the lag in meeting seems to be very bad from video to voice. Is this something that's being worked on? Okay, I wasn't, from, uh, I wasn't aware of that. I have actually noticed a tiny little bit of a lag um, when talking with someone from the US. I wasn't sure if it was just my internet, but definitely there have been a lot of changes happening within meeting over the last few months, you know, with everyone moving to a remote work. Um, we have definitely pushed really hard. And also with Showtime, we've pushed the teams really hard to um, really, really quickly improve some of just different aspects of the application. So I would say that's definitely something being worked on. I can take your feedback to the product team. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I'll let, I'll let the product team know. And when I send you an email about the click uh, question, I can respond to that as well. Um, but yeah, basically meeting is very straightforward. Uh, you have a bunch of different recordings. You can edit some settings as well. Cool, no problem, Katie. And you can, you can manage your users from here. You can change... Uh, you know, their sort of access rights and permissions. You can also do that from the Zoho Remotely Admin Panel. You can also integrate meeting with Zoho CRM and campaigns if you're a Zoho One user. Um, yeah, if you wanted to do that. So I won't go too much further into meeting, um, but I will show you just some screenshots of what it were to, what it looks like when you're in the actual meeting in the webinar. So this is when you're having a meeting, you can see your attendees, you can chat, you can start sharing, you can, like I said, lock the meeting, and then you can give uh, attendees control of the, uh, you can pass on and you can let them have control of the presentation and they can show you their screen. Then you can also mute their audio. You can see who has their audio muted. If it were to have a little slash through it, that would be muted and you can remove people from the um, meeting as well. 
So then this is in the webinar. You can see we have a Q&A. We have some polls. You can record it. And then you can see these three people have their hand up. You can allow people to talk, make them the presenter. And then you can invite attendees really easily, um, giving them the link or sending them an email. So that's it for meeting. Now I want to go over WorkDrive. Um, so WorkDrive is our unified file management application. And it's designed specifically for team collaboration that gives your team a secure and shared workspace. It's similar to Google Drive if you've used that before, but the big difference, and this is similar with other file storage vendors out there, is that you know Google Drive and the other companies sort of uh, come from a consumer model idea. So each account has its own storage and then you can share files between each other um, like that. So it does the job. It serves consumers and companies when they move document storage from their sort of uh, desktop to the cloud. But this is not the most effective way to store data and documents, especially when working in teams. So Zoho WorkDrive is different because there is one WorkDrive for the company and each user has a physical space in that work drive. So you can still have personal folders, but then you can build team folders. For example, like the click channels, you can build a marketing uh, folder within work drive. And then when the marketing, when a new person is added to the marketing team, they will automatically be added to that folder. And that shared workspace is available and shown in their work drive. So then every document that is added to that marketing folder is visible automatically to the entire team and people who sort of aren't relevant will not have access to the marketing folder. So it will still be within the company-wide work drive, but it sort of will be hidden from them. Um, so yeah, instead of having to share a bunch of documents and folders with someone, especially when it comes to onboarding new employees, if they are coming onto the team, you give them access to the folder and they automatically have everything they need to get started. Beyond that, within WorkDrive, you can uh, store, create and edit documents. And this is done with our Office Suite, Writer Sheet and Show. But you can also bring in uh, .docx documents and PDF documents and edit them using our Office Suite. And then you can also export them again as a .docx or as a .pdf. And you can share them with uh, external people. It's really easy to make documents or folders public. And you have a few options when doing this as well. Okay, Katie just said, we have set up files for all of our clients for them to use as a Dropbox for database backups that they send us to work on. It shows in the folder as unread. Is there a way to get a notification that a file has been sent to us? Hmm. A notification. I'm sure there would be a way. Let me look into that for you because I'm not sure off the top of my head. I know that um, if you would rather a notification and you don't like that it shows as unread, then I can definitely ask. The thing with... Um, the unread tab is that that is meant to be your sort of notifications. Um, but I guess, yeah, it's not like, I guess you have to go into work drive to see the unread tab. Um, and it's not necessarily like you get a notification when you're not in work drive, like an email or a pop up or something. So yeah, that's a really good question. I will definitely have a look into that. For you and let you know. Yeah, email or pop up would be great. Okay, yeah, I will look into that for you. So, <clears throat> so yeah, sharing externally. Um, you can give anyone with the link access. You can turn off editing and sharing so they'll only be able to view the document. You can then also password protect the documents and set an expiry date on the document. And then there's also a record of all of your version history. So if you delete something and maybe want to go back to that version, you can go into the version history and sort of um, go back to that 
to that old version. Uh, you can also turn on track changes, which tracks all of the changes made and doesn't actually delete anything. So this is good when you're working on something together and you need that security that people can edit things, uh, but they can't actually delete anything. So also there's a desktop sync option. This is great for people who obviously used to travel a lot and maybe will travel a lot in the future. Um, yeah, so you can sync it with your desktop so that you can work offline. Uh, again, there are admin capabilities that allow you to set roles and permissions, and these are quite extensive. Um, and it's very secure as well. So we can't access your data. That's yours. And then, you know, all of these things that I've mentioned help you to maintain security internally and when dealing with external parties. So all of those different settings I was talking about. So now I want to show you a demo of WorkDrive. Close these. <clears throat> so when we first get rid of that, when we first hop into our WorkDrive, this is what it will look like. So, um. So yeah, as a user, we can see our, our recent files, our folders, and then uh, like I was saying before, the unread, which I'll check about the notification thing. Um, but beyond this, you can see these different team folders that we have here. So there's a general folder, and the fact that it doesn't have a lock next to it means that everyone in the company has access to it and can view the files inside if you've given them uh, permission to view the files inside. Uh, and then these locks on them mean that it's sort of locked to a certain group of people. Um, they're sort of departmental specific folders and only the people in that department will automatically be given access. Of course, within these folders, um, oh, there's nothing in here, you can select a document and share that with someone and that won't mean that they can then access the entire folder. That will just mean that they can see the document that you've shared with them. Um, and then we can really easily create a team folder. You would just add this button here, type in a name of the team folder, make it public or private, and then add a description. So I'm going to go to my folders here and I want to show you a writer document. All right, so when you first use Rider, uh, this is what it will look like. And it sort of looks a little bit bare maybe, or I like it because I think it looks, um, it helps me to focus more. There's not much to look at. So you'll notice that there's no menu bar. Uh, generally, I think that it looks really messy with like a big menu bar up here. You can also get rid of that. Um, but if you want a menu bar, basically all you would have to do is highlight a word and this little bar would pop up. Um, you can perform a bunch of different actions here. You can add a comment, um, like great work or something. You can add that comment and that will show up here. That will also show up in the review section of um, these tabs here. And you can get rid of that as well, back to compose. Um, and then your team would be able to hit reply or you could resolve the comment. And this is all yeah, shown in that section up here. We also have a history of the document. You can see that we have track changes turned on um, and you'll be able to see all of the changes made here. So yeah, with the track changes turned on, you can see that someone has come in and added this, these three words here and they've deleted these words here, <clears throat> but it doesn't actually delete them. It's still shown there in green. Um, only the admin of the document can turn track changes off. Um, so now when we like highlight something, let me just get rid of that. If we needed to do more than just sort of little actions, we would be able to click more 
or we can come up here and click this little burger icon and we can open that. So then a menu pops open and you can perform a range of different actions here. There's some formatting actions. You can insert um, a bunch of things here. You can edit the design, the page setup. Um, there's some tools and then there's also some really cool automation tools. So if we look over here, we can see there's this thing that looks like a little bit of a snippet of code. And this is actually a merge tag meaning you can insert data from other applications. And this is actually being pulled in from um, the CRM. So yeah, we can use, or actually I think it's coming from a spreadsheet actually. So we can use merge tags um, from a spreadsheet. Now we created this earlier actually. And there was some issues with the, the field mapping, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. So we can see that the source of this information is being pulled in from the customer list. And I think this is available yeah, here. So that's actually a spreadsheet. Um, and then you'd be able to add in, maybe if you wanted the email added, that would be added there. Yeah. Um, so, so basically you can, you can pull in this data from the, <clears throat> from the customer list and sort of save this as a document. And then when you were to open the document, you could choose a customer and all of this data would be sort of auto filled in there. So uh, into the customer list, that information is actually being pulled in from a form on our website. So we've linked a form on our website to the customer list, and then we've linked that customer list data into this uh, document. So we can also publish fillable documents for templates, and you can do that um, back here. So you can use them as forms as well. You can send it off for an e-signature. Uh, you can do this with Zoho Sign if you are a Zoho One customer or if you use something like DocuSign or Adobe Sign that integrates with uh, Writer as well. So yeah, there's a bunch of different actions you can perform. So let's say we are done with this document now and we want to share it. It's really easy to come up here and type in an email, set the access, uh, set the access level if we wanted to, so yeah, type in an email, set the access here. If we wanted to share it externally, we would click new external share link. You could add in the name. Um, <clears throat> sorry, you could, sorry, you could create the link here. So whatever you wanted the, the name of the document to be, and then you could edit the access level here. You can set a password, set an expiration date. You can uh, make it so they can or cannot download the document. And then you can request some sort of data off them as well. Um, then if we head to distribute, there's a few different actions we can perform as well. Sorry. Here we go. Yes, so we have some published settings. You can email it, post it to your blog. And then you can uh, merge the document, sign it. You can also download it. Here's what I was saying before about downloading at, as a Microsoft Word document or a PDF or just a raw text file or HTML, a password protected file as well. Uh, another really cool thing before I get out of this document is Zia. So she is over here. Where is she? Oh, this is our little... Um, smart bar here, our little click, just quickly. Okay, so Zia is up here. And Zia is our Zoho intelligence assistant. And basically what that means is um, she's an artificial intelligence virtual assistant who can help with things like spelling and grammar throughout a document, but can also give you some insight into your writing. So you can see some spelling errors, um, the ease of reading, is it difficult to read for your uh, teammates or for your customers? Do you have some wordy phrases, um, some improper word choices, passive sentences, cliches, 
you've got all of this information from her here. And this is a really great tool to have inside your office suite as well. So one last thing I want to show you is a sheet document. So I'm going to go back into WorkDrive and click on this global sales data here. And this is just a sheet of generic sales data. There's about a thousand different rows of data here. Um, but basically, this is just some information that we have collected. And so how do we get something useful out of this document? Well, we also have Zia here. And basically, we can click on something. Let me just start that again. We can click on region, open up Zia, and she can show us some different sorts of charts and reports here. Then we can go over to here and we can add in this chart here. And you can then edit what sort of chart it is, like if you wanted a bar chart or if you wanted some her to pull in different information, you'd be able to do that as well. So that's just a little bonus to show you how Zia can help you within the Office Suite. And she is also available as a platform-wide search engine as well. So you can search across multiple applications, um, which is really, really useful, especially when you are not sure, you know, who has sent you this document. You can simply type in their name and everything that they have sent you or every instance of that name will pop up. And then you can sort of drill that down to find what you're looking for. So that is all for the demos. I want to just quickly go over some resources. I know we're a bit over time, but I'll just go for a few more minutes. So these are some resources to have if you wanted some more information. And then this is my email. I will send you an email with some answers to those questions as well. But basically my email is lira.m at zohocorp.com. Here are some more resources on Click Meeting and Work Drive if you wanted to learn about those specifically or if you wanted to watch some webinars held by those product teams. Um, one really exciting thing is we actually have a new advanced series coming up. So if you are familiar with uh, some of these applications and you're wanting more information, basically the advanced series uh, means that I'm going to be joined by the product team, so they're product experts, and I will run the first 10, 15 minutes of the session, and then they will come in and join us and do a demo and go over some important um, bits and pieces that they, uh, at, you know, within the application, and they'll show us how to do that. So I'll just type in the chat um, section all of those meeting links. I think projects and sprints actually got cut off. So, okay, that one at the bottom is the projects and sprints session. But yeah, if you wanted some more information on that, you can head to those links. Um, that will be really, really useful to you if you have used the applications before. Uh, then if you're interested, we are actually looking for people who have been using Zoho for, you know, Zoho remotely for at least a few weeks or more, Zoho One for a few months or more, or if you're just, if you're really happy with using Zoho and you feel like um, it has really helped you during this time, that would be great if you wanted to reach out to me and we could organize something like a case study or a video testimonial. It would be great exposure for you because we would put you on our website and our YouTube but also for us, it would help us highlight the effects of, of this global pandemic on our customers, but also how we are working to help you. Um, if you have been a Zoho user, a paying customer for over a year, and you're a small business, we do have an emergency subscription assistance program, which will give you up to three months free of your subscription. Um, yeah, if you're wanting more information about that, definitely have a look, zoho.com forward slash ESAP. And now it is time for any other questions that you might have about um, the applications mentioned or even any other questions that you have about Zoho um, as a company or our other products.
So if you have any questions, type them in the <clears throat> question bar. You can always email me if you have any other questions. Katie said, I've asked all my questions. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Katie. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, I will get back to you on the, the click and work drive questions as well. Okay, great. I think that's all of the questions then. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you have a great rest of your day or night wherever you are. Um, and I hope to see you at one of the advanced sessions um, in the future. No further questions. Okay, thank you so much. And yeah, I'll talk soon. Okay, bye.